I'm Debbie Collins. What I want to talk today about is accountability and integrity. Accountability. First thing I want to do is I want to apologize for the impact that this video has had on my mother. Mum, I'm not having a nervous breakdown. I'm not hitting a wall. And to my daughter, Natasha, I'm not Sinead O'Connor who's having some kind of nervous breakdown. What I am doing though is I'm trying to act with these principles in my life. I'm trying to act with to hold myself accountable to my actions and how that impacts myself and others and then to act with integrity, to stick to my word, to do what I am say I'm going to do. I'm the founder of the Ubuntu Addiction Community Trust and the aim of the trust is to train people, empower people that they can go out and treat addiction in this country. And I can only do that if I teach principles. And the first thing I need to teach is accountability. How can we stand account as people, as individuals, as citizens. Now we heard our president say the other day at the Sonar speech that he wants to be there for those that are suffering with HIV, the alcoholic, the drug addict, and that really appealed to me. And I've been doing this work for a long time and I am speaking as the founder of the trust. And I have made a commitment to do something. And this is part of our training. Accountability is the ability to hold myself to account, to hold somebody else to account, and then to hold us to account so that we can get back into integrity with what our word is and what we've said. When I was working in corporate many years ago, when I first arrived in Joburg in 99, I found myself waking up in the morning and going to work and not doing what I was tasked to do. As a worker in the organization, I used to avoid doing what I was meant to do because I wouldn't want to do it. And people could hold me to account to it or, and I would come up with some kind of justification of why I wouldn't fulfill the role. I was out of integrity with myself. I was out of integrity with the employer. So I changed it. I left the organization. I stopped being part of the poison. I stopped sitting there and complaining and moaning. I got out of my victim consciousness. I went out and I built an IT company, which I'm very proud of. And that worked for me. And I want to challenge you to see where you're out of integrity with your life and your roles and what you're meant to be doing. We are all meant to be working together to lift this nation up. We must speak our truth. And this is me speaking my truth as best I can, as fumbled as it is, as messy as it is. I'm just speaking my truth. I'm trying to hold myself to account of how I could be doing a better job as a founder of a trust. As somebody that is tasked with looking after something. Somebody that has to lead something. Something that has to be used to raise this nation up, to change the addiction problem that we have here and the consequences thereof. And this dysfunctional behavior that happens in, within the, the addict himself impacts the family and that impacts the work environment. And I can see how those patterns infiltrate the workplace even when substance isn't involved. People get addicted to power, to sending emails, to controlling people. If you are not working in your organization and you are not enthusiastic about the role that you've got, change it. Get some help. Be part of the solution. We can't sit and blame leadership the whole time. It's your fault. No, it's your fault. We get caught in this left-right thing. We've got to work together. We've got to be part of the solution. I think the word is butapela, which means people first. And I'm sure I've got it wrong in my clumsy whiteness. But I believe in this country. I believe in us working together. I believe in coming up with a solution. I got some negative comments from my from my last week's video about me expressing my anger. <laughs> and part of my psyche is I focused on those negative comments. I didn't focus on all the good ones, but I focused on the negative ones. And the reason I focused on the negative ones is because there's wisdom there in the criticism. 
People talk shit. Hey, that was a bit harsh. Let me just rein it in a bit. Let me just rein it in. People don't understand. Yeah. We need to be able to speak to people in a way that they're able to hold themselves to account to their own actions. Because unless you've got the ability to see where you're out of integrity with your word and what you're committed to do, it's going to be like farting against thunder. So I'm appealing to you today to kind of have a look at your lives and where you're at and where you're out of integrity with your life. Yeah? And how you can hold yourself to account to change it and then to do what you need to do to repair the relationships around you. Yeah? And it's difficult. It requires humility. It requires patience, courage. It requires a lot of courage. Yeah. And my ranting and raving last week might have rattled a couple of cages. Yeah. I'm not sorry about that. I believe in what I'm doing and what I'm saying. I'm just... I realized it would have had some unintended impacts on people. And mostly my family and those that I love that are closest to me. But to my family and friends out there, I'm, you know me, I'm really trying to make a difference here. I'm trying to build the economy. I'm trying to create jobs. I'm trying to empower organizations. I'm trying to get the workforce to take responsibility for themselves and the roles that they have within the workforce. I'm trying to get us all focused in moving in a direction that is one of sustainability, one of building for everyone. And I'm out of integrity in many areas of my life. And I continuously wake up and try and improve that. Yeah. I mean, like part of the, I mean, it's so insidious, this stuff. I'd send out this video and then I sit there and I wait for the likes and what's going on. That in itself is a, is a, <laughs> a, a, a whole challenge that we're going to face in the future. How, the, how is technology and uh, that stuff taking us away from the connection that we're meant to be having as humans? You know? As I sit and I talk to you, I've got a whole debating committee in my head going, David, you're talking a lot of shit. Nobody's going to listen. What's going on? And because of that, I go out and I try and get affirmation from people. And then I get all people pleasy and try and like suck up to people and to get the affirmations of what I need. But ultimately, I'm being dishonest and I'm betraying my soul and what my soul's purpose is. I truly believe in Kokorozashi and what my soul's purpose is. And I appeal to you guys to work out what your soul's purpose is. And then you go out and you make the change in the environment. You take responsibility for the part you play in your relationships, whether it be with your boss, with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with your colleagues, with government, with bureaucracy, with the systems around there, and we need to change these things that work for everyone and stop pointing the fingers. I was really pleased when, when Cyril told that guy to shut up. Yeah? And then he revoked the statement and then there's process and all that sort of stuff. Me personally, I don't vote. I've never voted. I voted once in my life and that was in the UK for the Flying Yoga Party. It was a real kind of anti-establishment vote until I realized uh, somebody told me the other day that uh, people died for the right to vote. And that got me thinking. It really got me thinking. I don't vote for a political party. I vote with my feet. I vote by doing something. That's where I'm at at the moment. To be quite honest, I don't trust anyone out there. I trust myself. I trust my intentions. I trust the people around me. But I look how my community is, my direct community. And I listen to how people talk around the braai and I'm often ashamed about it. And I'm ashamed that I don't say anything. 
And it's in that shame. There's a truth there. And I need to get back into integrity with that. So mom and Natasha, I'm sorry if these videos freak you out. I like to think I know what I'm doing. I'm quite clear of where I want to go and what I do. And I look at the evidence around me and I make calls on that. So I'm going to leave you with a question. Where are you out of integrity with your life? And where do you need to hold yourself to account or others to account to get back into integrity with yourself? And when you do it, do it with love. Not violence. Thank you.